Hello, and welcome to the Pragmatic Live podcast series, where we tackle the biggest challenges facing today's product management, product marketing, and other market and data-driven professionals with some of the best minds in the industry. I'm Rebecca Calajaris, Vice President of Marketing and Product Strategy at Pragmatic Institute, and your host for this episode. I am very excited to have with us today Dr. Nancy Lee, Director of Product, Mentor, and YouTuber. Uh, She's held leadership roles at Verizon, Cox, Shell Oil, is a graduate of BU and MIT. Uh, But her real goal, and I would say calling, is to help people transition from worker bees to product managers and business leaders. Uh, And that's what she's going to talk about with us today. Welcome, Nancy. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. All right. So I found you, Dr. Nancy Lee, through your YouTube channel of the same name. But if you could help give our listeners a little context and talk about uh, your story, kind of, you know, where you came from, how you landed your first product management job and why you're so passionate about helping others find theirs. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you asked me so many questions. And I do uh, feel very happy to share with you guys about my story and why I am teaching product management and how I get to where I am. Uh, a quick story, actually, I came to the U.S. with $800 in my pocket to pursue my American education. Um, to be honest, as an immigrant, I moved here 10 years ago, and I was very like defeated because I didn't have the confidence. People laugh at my accent. Uh, accent. Um, I just feel like I'm also like behind everybody given my English speaking skills and not having the right network either. And then I started to figure out what's the best way to get ahead, to learn different kinds of skills. So at least I can be average. Um, Guess what? Within a few years, I happened to become the one of the youngest engineering PhD from Boston University. Then after that, I start to continue to learn different kinds of skill set, especially get into product management. And within four years, I got promoted as a director of product. And now my mission is to make product management career available to everybody, which is what you said, uh, help people transition from worker bees to product manager and business leader. And the reason, actually, I'm very passionate about teaching product management and also paving the road for other people who want to get into the director, VP, or leadership position in product management was because to be honest, um, I have been working for Fortune 500 companies, multiple of them, for a little while. In the process of getting to a director position, I realized that I was the only female manager out of a 100 people put a management organization in one of the Fortune 500 organizations. So I was like, huh, something is missing. And then I look around, people like me, um, like immigrant and women in general, We didn't have the right network, right resources. We didn't know how to stand up for ourselves and also using the right skill set to get ahead. So therefore, I just started to teach on YouTube and and people started to like actually getting offers and also some of them negotiated 50% more salary using my tips. There's a lot of good outcome and for me just to share for free. And then later on, I started my coaching program and now I taught over 100 product managers to break into product management. It's a great story. All right. So before we're going to talk a lot about what you, what you teach and, and, and the kind of tips and t- things, but before that, uh, why product management? Like what is it about it, uh, the role that is so attractive to you and why do you love it? And why do you think it is such a great fit for so many people? Awesome. I love this. I can talk about this for hours, by the way. I do think product management is the most fulfilling career for people, especially if you want to create something and serving customers. This is the perfect combination between business and technical and also leadership role. As a product manager, we are the CEO of product, and which is actually we are acting as a CEO of product. And that we are able to lead the team and execute on certain visions. And not just like management consulting, you have vision and you can execute. So we combine both. We're able to come up with a product strategy and then work with engineers and designers, cross-functional teams and marketing to execute and also bring your product to the hands of customers. I think this that using the right skill set and also being able to solve problems for others is the most fulfilling part of being a product manager. Um, On top of that, I also believe that product management career also prepare you 
to be the next CEO, the next VP of product, or next really big leadership position down the road, um, like sometime like five years later. Um, because I have discovered that actually being a product manager and being the CEO or slash entrepreneur is 70% overlap. So which means lots of things what we do as a product manager is so similar to start your own startup because you need to find product market fit and find out what customer want and deliver it to customers. The only difference is that yeah, 30% in startup CEOs, you need to raise funding. Um, so therefore, I, I totally, I fell in love with product management. I totally understand that. It's 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 strategic, it's creative. There's so much cross-team collaboration. And I agree with you that it is also uh, a, a great path to, to even a wider leadership position. So yes. All right. So now you've helped, I know, over a hundred people, right, land their first product management job. And there is no doubt, Nancy, during that process, you've seen a lot of things that people do wrong and lots of people, things people do right. Um, But let's talk about the things that people do right. What are the best practices you see and that you recommend for someone when they're looking for their first gig in product management? Very cool. So regarding what they did right, the two parts, right? What did they write in terms of getting into product management and also what they get right when they start their PM job? I think those two skill sets are different and also related. And for example, what they did right in terms of getting into product management I believe that starting from learning the right product management skills, speak the language of product managers and start to gain product management experience ahead of time. Those, the the type of student I have taught are people who is laser focused on how can I become a product manager even before I get a job. That's why our students just get job offer much faster and also getting into many like fan companies. And actually, within two weeks, we're having a fan panel from our alumni who talks about how they become a product manager in fan companies. Usually, the, it's much harder to get in, but we use different kind of strategies for people to get ahead. Now, let's also talk about what they did right in terms of after they get a job. To be honest, I have like two people reach out to me. This is, sounds so crazy. So, so they, they got the offer through uh, like other people's program, and but they got fired after two months. It sounds, sounds so bizarre. And after they get an offer, you know, and, and it is very like, um, them are saying like all oh, experience for them. Then all of a sudden, you, in, uh, two months later, they get fired. Uh, and then I asked them, so what happened was because they didn't master different kind of PM skills ahead of time. It's just a little bit, I try to fake it until you make it. So I really hate this this phrase. I know American like to talk about it. Uh, it never existed in my in my culture, fake it until you make it. Uh, and then once you make it, suddenly you realize, oh, I don't know how exactly to do a customer interview, how to write requirement, how to develop product roadmap. That leads them like getting like fired in the new job. But what other people do well in the first 30, 60, 90 days was they started to step one, looking into different kind of cross-functional teams so that they can start to collaborate. And number two, they start to think about from the customer's need, who are the customers, they really get the hands dirty immediately to understand the customers. And actually, I made a YouTube video talking about what you need to do in the first like, 30, 60, 90 days with all the detailed plans for people to get jump stars. So hopefully they can get promoted uh, in the future as well. Feel free to go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Nancy Lee on YouTube, and then you're able to find those more detailed uh, suggestions. But I think that that's just a, a testament to the kind of approach you bring to uh, Nancy. Like it's about how do you land a job, right? When you talked about speaking the same language, uh, it's mm-hmm. about particularly if you're trying to land a product role in an organization you own a different role in is, is how can you start doing some of that work ahead of time, but it's not, you don't just leave them there. Like, great, you've landed it uh, because there are some, some distinct things that you, you know, you need to keep it. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, And so knowing what that is and, you know, look, everybody learns to some degree in the job. Anyone who hires you is going to know you don't have 15 years experience, right? Like they're going to know that. Uh, but there, there's, there's still a, a real framework uh, that you can put in place to, to, to help you be successful upfront. 
So I think one of the other things that is interesting when we talk is um, is the different paths in. So we do an annual survey every year, and we know that about 50% of our audience uh, used to be engineers or, or uh, development kind of, you know, in, in the coding space before they turned to product. And the other half comes from, oh my gosh, like everywhere, right? So you've got salespeople, you've got designers, you've got uh, subject matter experts, right? Uh, nurses who then become product managers for companies that sell to nurses, um, so can we talk a little bit about sort of the advice you give and how it changes based on maybe um, maybe the path that they're going down uh, and some of the successes that you've seen there? So maybe we start with engineering um, and kind of for those who are in engineering today, what have you seen work? What's a good path from transitioning from engineering into product? Awesome. Yeah, I do love to talk about engineers because I came from engineering background myself and told I was in their shoes uh, like a few years ago when I transitioned into product management. And first of all, I do believe that engineers have certain type of competitive advantage if you want to get into deep tech product management, such as if you want to join like AWS, what, uh, like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, uh, all those AI type of companies, if you were an engineer even working on AI type of product is going to make people go, oh, you kind of know it, that's great. And then the rest is you need to build all the business skills, what you're lacking. But we do have like a lot of students, for example, my student, and he was an engineer for three years. And guess what? He got offers from Google, not just Google, he got three offers and they are Google, Amazon, and also another self-driving car company. It's all amazing uh, companies. And he, he also got a PhD like me as well. So we are still similar. And yeah, so I, I do believe that from the engineering perspective, you just need to target your right market. People appreciate your engineering background, plus learning the business mindset as well. And in addition, I also have other people such as data scientists, and um, they are very deep into data. Again, they have technical background, but they are missing all the business and product management skills. But no problem. You can learn the product management skills, but you should leverage any other company who appreciate you're able to um, process a large amount of data or get exposure to data, right? So one of my students, she actually also got two offers. And one of the offers is Expedia, as we know, all the airline companies that traveling, like growing like crazy. I believe the, the flight ticket is so expensive nowadays when you travel. So they hire lots of product managers and the one people who understand large amount of consumer data. You never need to process data as a product manager, but you understand how data work and then you are a product manager. So that, that's how my data scientist student actually get an offer in like, travel companies like Expedia. They're not just getting one offer, they get multiple offers and have something to choose from. But I think in both those cases, right, it's it's about finding the right companies to value your background in particular, yeah. right? Uh, we talk about this all the time, that there are a great uh, many of engineering-led organizations, and there that that's a very popular path for product management. And what you talk about the education to give you that business side, that's a great marriage. On the data side, you're right, like looking at organizations where there is a large amount of data to capitalize on and not so that you're going to build the models and do the the analysis yourself, but you will understand what's possible and how to leverage that resource as a product manager. Uh, and so I yeah. think that would be a powerful addition to the role. Exactly. I like the examples you mentioned, someone who's a nurse become uh, became a product manager for a company who sell product to nurse nursing like uh, customers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do believe that that's a fantastic lead way to get into product management. Actually, this also happened to other of my students as well. And I, for example, another student of mine, I'm so proud of her, it's so amazing. And her background was someone working in the hospital on the administrative stuff. She has no uh, like digital background. And to be honest, she didn't go to like amazing schools like Harvard, MIT, and actually she went to Phoenix University. But she started to just nail those like interview opportunities and start getting lots of referrals. And so far, she was able to get 100% referral rate whenever she reached out to people. But she was very smart because she knows medical space very well. She reached out to any kind of healthcare related companies and including those pre-IPO startups, um, just like pitching herself, 
and talking about how she knows about the customers, given her healthcare background, of course, she needs to have a full package and pitch better and portfolio, everything end up together. But I do think that's a very smart and leveraging what you know before getting into the new space. All right. So I think that's an excellent example too, right? So one big thing that you obviously have people with is finding the companies who are really going to appreciate and value your particular set of experience and background. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I, so let's talk about, so you've, you found some people and you've got that interview, right? And you're super excited. Uh, how do you help people prepare for that part, right? How do you go, okay, you've found some people a connection. What is, how can people arm themselves to really succeed in those conversations? Awesome. So I do love this topic because I believe that uh, there is a specific strategy people need to use. And lots of people thought, let me just read the $10 book so that I'm able to get an offer from Google. Seriously, this is the, the most, the biggest mistake lots of people make. Um, so I know everybody's reading the book about cracking the PM interview that was like eight years old. Everybody's reading that. But to be honest, that's the, the book has old information, old framework. And I don't think a $10 book is getting you a product management job, not just not mention getting into fan companies. And so the right way actually to ace those product management interview is to use a different framework. And for example, in my program, I teach people this new framework I invented. And whenever I invent a new framework, I take a PhD thesis. Hey guys, I'm I'm I came from an engineering background. I was I put many different cases into a new framework. And then leverage all my like uh, students' latest interview experience to create different kind of frameworks so that we can have the best outcome. For example, actually this week I published a new YouTube video about the Gucci framework for the product strategy interview questions. And you guys can check out my YouTube video where I describe the framework. Basically, Gucci framework stands for like G, like Go. And the mission and like C stands for competition. And the next one starts with another C stands for like customer segmentation. And U stands for unmet needs. And, and I stands for the integrated ecosystem. So basically the specific things you need to talk about and go in depth and using the right framework. So using the right framework is the number one thing for you to nail those put a management interview. The number two things you need to nail those interviews is that you need to start to think about how can you put your prior experience into the lens of a product manager. So let me give you a specific example. For example, one of my students, she is a consultant. She was a consultant. So right now she works for Amazon as a product manager. And herself, when, when we get like start talking, she always said, oh, I am so strategic. Yeah, seriously. All the all the consultants have like hundreds of projects. I don't know, how, but a lot of projects. They can work, they have worked on, and then they have the unlimited like stories about their success stories, different projects. But whenever we ask some questions regarding how did you drive customer insight? How did you turn a product from concept to execution? And the way they answer the questions is consultant way which is, oh, I work with stakeholders, I work with CEO, executives, I bring lots of people together. It's not a product management way or or methodology to drive customer insight. Yes, we do work with CEOs, like executives, but we care so much about customers. We have different methodology to communicate with customers, create customer persona. Basically, there's a lot of uh, different things that product manager does. So, and then I start to uh, train my students saying that, hey, you cannot tell other people about your success story with my CEO, but rephrase it and think about what will product manager do in your case. So people need to like repackage their entire story. And finally is you do need to do lots of mock interview. I also uh, see lots of people using the wrong way to do mock interview. For example, if someone I knew someone crazy she practice 300 cases. You don't need 300. No, that's that's a lot of time and, and, and took her 10 months to even get a job. So I recommend my, my students to like practice with the right people or at least in your level using uh doing the right training, you in the right training program or someone even better than you. Don't just find anybody to practice 
oh, sounds like time is free. I think time is the most valuable thing in your life. Don't practice 300 cases and try to get a job in 10 months. Efficiency is the most important thing everybody needs to learn so that you can not just get a job, so that you can get promoted as well. Well, and that efficiency is, is something that will absolutely serve you well uh, when you do have the job. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I yeah. think product management is one of those and, and the research we do and the and the customer interviews and the market interviews and all of those, like there's an endless supply uh, in a good way. And there's a, a million requirement questions and there's a ton of development where like there is a lot. So efficiency, knowing like ruthless prioritization uh, is a skill you're going to need in the role. So it's a good one to have uh, during the the process as well. Exactly. All right. So uh, we talked a little bit about the good things that you see people do, sort of how they find the right roles, how they prepare for those first interviews. What are some of the sort of common mistakes that you see uh, that maybe we could help people listening avoid? Very good question. And actually, there are lots of mistakes and also lead to lots of challenges and frustration for why people wasn't able to get into the ideal uh, position. And for example, the, the biggest challenge I've seen people having is that they cannot even get an interview. So when I started teaching people like, get a job as a product manager, it was like, okay, let me teach you how to do interview. No, like 90% of people right now in the market, they don't know how to even get an interview. I think that's the biggest challenge. The second biggest challenge is that they don't have product management experience. But all the product manager job asking for like three years minimum product management experience before you even become a product manager. So people are stuck in the middle, chicken act problem. Like, uh, how, how, how can I like, gain three years experience without being a product manager? So lots of them just cannot even like get food in the door and, and, and still have seen um, challenges regarding getting rejected. I have, I have someone, I know someone who had like 30 interviews and they can never pass the first round like recruiter screening hall. There's so many different challenges people are facing today. So let's talk about screener ones first. Actually, I talked to one of my like yesterday. It, it's crazy. So uh, it, it, it's very interesting that he was always like getting rejected in the screening call, like tens of like rejections in the past 10 months. And now, now recently he joined a program. Now we start to improve. And actually, a, 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 another student of mine, very interesting, she was always rejected in the screening call the whole time. And then within six uh, uh, weeks of training, which is a month and a half, now she go to find around 100% of, uh, of the time. And as of today, we're speaking, she already received a job offer as a product manager. So let me tell you guys what the secret behind passing the screening call, why somebody cannot even pass the first one was because step one is that you really need to have your 30 seconds elevated pitch ready. Um, I made a YouTube video with detailed description how to do it with the framework I teach you guys. But in a high level, the most important thing is that you need to have your story ready in terms of why I'm here today, why I'm better than others. You need to get it done within 30 seconds. Maybe you'll feel, wow, so impressive. I got to pass her to the second round. I just want to learn more. I think like that. And the same thing as I told you guys, I'm the youngest engineer in PhD and also got promoted as a direct product was in uh, uh, four years. And people are like, wow, I want to learn more. What's going on? Why is she so efficient compared with others? But I never tell others, let me tell you my full life story, which will last for an hour. So, so it's about using the sharpest sentences and words describing your value proposition to the company using the 30 seconds elevator pitch framework I invented. Feel free to come on YouTube and check out the framework. But that's a step one. Step two is that you really need to understand what they're looking for, which is, to be honest, it's a very basic fundamentals everybody needs to, need to check out, right? Lots of people like to say, for example, oh, I'm the number one top 1% 1 graduate from my school. But like, okay, so... Um, but the job was like, oh, we want somebody who is working on like baby uh, like healthcare product with healthcare background and with also someone with very customer uh, focus or maybe we want someone also has some engineering background so they can work with engineers. And clearly they're working, they're looking for those kind of 
like a qualification from candidates. What you need to do is that when you start to pitch or like to the recruiter, even through the second round, uh, first round, you need to start to talk about your qualification in the three areas I just mentioned. You need to have very short and concise answers to meet those criteria. Lots of people just use the same thing and just hope one day people will discover I'm really good at healthcare, but you, you don't really uh, try to think about what other people want to hear. And that's, that's the most critical thing people need to uh, start working on so that you can pass the first round of uh, screening hall. That's great advice. That's great advice for, for every profession, everyone listening, right? That's a good one. Now, you talked a little bit about, about several of your students who get multiple offers. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also think that it's important to not just necessarily jump on, even if you only get one, you still want to make sure it's a good good fit for you. So uh, what kind of criteria, what kind of framework do you provide in terms of picking the right job? So you've, you've talked about uh, how you find the right companies to apply for, how you, you know, kind of get through the interview process and what you should focus on. And then like, when should you say yes? I love this question, to be honest, because last week, um, my student asked me this, the best questions that I feel so good to help her to reject Amazon offer. I know I, I sounds crazy, but but my, my point is that um so for example I this happens multiple times and I, I still like uh Jeff Bezos but she heard the other offer is it, it is better. And this happened multiple times. For example, uh my student last week she got an Amazon offer as an individual contributor, but she also got another offer as director product in a pre-IPO startup. And she was like, which one should I choose? Fan companies and pre-IPO cool startup. You know, those two things. I also have students, um, he got a Google offer and Amazon offer. Now, which one should I choose? Everybody was thinking about those things. And so the framework, I teach people to think about these kind of offers is that step one, please think about uh, to be honest, straightforward, it's about Saturday. And I think, I'm so sorry I bring this up so early. But, but it's I true. Think, yeah, it is true. If there's a, like, that double, someone, I don't know which company, want to come double your salary, I would like to join the company, double my salary, things like that, right? So think about the financial things. Um, first, I think that the first thing come into mind. And, and let's assume they pay you similarly. And especially for most of my student cases, Google, Amazon pay you similarly. I don't think Google goes a little bit higher. But the other one is Amazon and the startup. They also pay you similarly in terms of the cash she received, like right? she's going to receive from Amazon and free IPO startup, right? Let, now the step one, take a money, take a look at money. And second is now think about your career growth in two different companies or multiple offers you have. And for example, for my student who received Amazon offer and also direct product in a pre-IPO startup and the career paths, she can see two different companies is 1% different because the uh, the startup has such a big upside. And once they go IPO, she can be the VP of managing really big team. But for a fan company, it's more, it's, it's like a fan, you know? So you work on something that everybody knows about. Um, maybe once, let's say you work on the Amazon website, the thing and uh, billions of people, not millions, billions of people will use it. So we have different kind of scope of work and also impact your career, like promotion in the future differently. Um, so I personally think that if you join Amazon as individual contributor, like two years later on, you will still jump out of Amazon to join another company as a director product in a pre-IPO company. That's the career path I designed for my student if you join Amazon. And in that case, well, you already got director product in a pre-IPO company, why you to a, a, do a detour, but also not everybody want to become a director. This is totally her personal choice, to be honest, just because she wants to continue to advance her career. Um, so therefore, uh, from career development perspective, I still think she does need to join a pre-IPO startup, but it's totally up to everyone's uh, final goal, where you want to go in terms of designing your career. Now, third step is your personal preference. I think there's so much personality going into any kind of job selections and who you are. Even I put the same job offer, same amount of money in front of 
you and me, maybe we choose something different, right? And that's where the personality come in. For example, some people would really feel like, you know what, I have been working in startup space in through my, throughout my entire career. There's another friend of mine and, and he just, I just want to join like a fan company so that I complete my career. I, I know startup too much for my rest, for, for, for my career so far. And in his case, he would like to join Amazon, which is what happened to another friend of mine who joined Amazon about a year and a half ago. And now he reached out back to me saying, oh, I experienced startup, I experienced Amazon. Now I want to experience Google. Can you help me get into Google? So people have different uh, prior life experience. And I also have moms uh, in my program and who are like, you know what? So like in the season, we call seasons, um, in this season of my career, I really want to focus on my 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 family at this moment. I have two young kids. And I was like, yeah, in that case, uh, maybe a pre-IPO startup is relatively uh, easier than Amazon because we, we know Amazon is a very stressful environment. So everybody has different kind of like uh, life choices. That's where the personality coming in. So therefore, I think that's a three three things combined will help you to select the best offer suitable for you. That's great insight. And it's not the same for everyone, right? There is definitely a financial aspect there. There is right. But that's why we all work. Uh, there is sort of, where do you want to go in your career? What kind of things matter to you? You know, uh, I was having a great discussion with someone else about, you know, what was their next step in their career? Because did they, did they want people management as part of it? It's, it's okay to, to not want that. Uh, and to continue to expand, right? There's things like that. And to your point, it's it's the season of your life that you're in uh, and what you're trying to balance there. And, and exactly. making the right decision is a big one. If you could get our listeners to do two things differently tomorrow, based on what we talked about today, what would it be? I, I love this question. And two things differently. That's a tough one. Um, so what jumped into my head immediately is that Please learn to invest in yourself immediately. Investing in yourself is the only thing with guaranteed return. If you guys are listening to this episode right now, I want you guys immediately think about, is there anything I can learn today immediately? Is there any course or any skills I need to invest right now today? If so, please immediately find the right courses, right group, right community to join immediately you need to take action right away so why is it so important to invest in yourself is that to be honest any past investment i had i had done in the past gave me more than a 10 percent return i have spent like forty thousand dollars learning different skill set just for me to get ahead no sometimes not get ahead just i feel normal that i just want to catch up with other people but the return get back to me is so significant that can serve me for the rest of my life so I recommend everybody start to think about anything you can learn today, start investing in yourself today. And to be honest, do not cheap out on the, 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 the education money. I know lots of people want to uh, like get free, free resources, $10 book. I personally believe that education is a return on investment. The little you, you invest in yourself, uh, the, the less you're going to get out. So it's, it's related. But if you want to learn for anything for free about product management and how to get product management job, feel free to check out my resources on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, which is Dr. Nancy Lee, Director of Product. You can also go to my website, drnancylee.com uh, to learn more about it. Uh, Lee actually spelled as L-I, not L-E, Dr. Nancy, L-I.com. And, and then the other part is the second thing you need to do immediately is change your mindset regarding your definition of career success or life success. What if your life is a marathon instead of a sprint? I know lots of people stress out regarding not having the confidence to get into the next level or feel like currently during the pandemic, we are, we are not getting all the resources we want. I understand there's lots of challenges, but if you see your entire like, life or career as a marathon, and then and see getting into product management is a sprint. You just need to make sure how can I get the best guidance, best resources to finish the sprint. 
But if I'm not able to get into like Google, Amazon, Facebook, like all my other students, this is just a first sprint. You did okay job, but life is a marathon. What are the second sprints you can design so that eventually you can get into your definition of your dream company? So I would recommend you guys immediately to start a draw map of your life marathon. What does this look like? Not just career, maybe relationship, maybe health or everything. And then you design your sprint. And in that way, you will be much happier and feel good that I finished this sprint or I did okay in this sprint, but next sprint will do even better. Um, so I suggest you to do these two things immediately today. Feel free to comment on my Instagram and YouTube and let me know about your sprint as well. I'm more than happy to hold you accountable. Thank you, Dr. Nancy. It was fantastic having you on today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca, and keep in touch. All right. Thank you. Uh, and, and if you want more of her great insights uh, for landing a product manager job, follow her on Dr. Nancy Lee on YouTube. Again, that is Lee L-I. Um, all right. That does it for today's episode. Thanks everyone for listening. And don't forget to join us next week when we tackle another great topic designed to help you elevate your product, your company, and your career.